Right, you're listening to Scotty McClue. A little bit of silence there brought for you. Cut to save the lives of Bateman Society. We're talking to Angela, who's in Charlie Dinky Doo. Angela. Dinky Doo, Scotty. How are you doing? Hey, all right, lovey. Um, I'm calling about the domestic violence thing. Yes, love. Um, recently, I suffered domestic violence at the hands of my husband. It was only a couple of weeks ago. Um, he beat me up quite viciously. Yes, he doesn't know why. Um, but... I put up with violence from him for three years and I finally took the ultimate step and I got him arrested. Um, but I was let down by the courts. The uh, courts did nothing for me. They um, fined him £60 and put him on a probation course for 12 months uh, and ordered him to stay away from the house. Um, so you got you got him out the house? Yeah. You got shot of him? Mm. I don't know that fining does any good at all, to be absolutely honest with you. Well, it does nothing for me. You know? It does nothing for me, finding him. I mean, he came round two nights ago because he wanted to see the children and he's been ordered to stay away from the house. And once again, I got punched in the face um, because he got angry and I wasn't doing as he was telling me to do. And no, yeah, but I he's... I mean, you don't have to do as he's telling you to do. No, I don't. You see? Uh, I mean, the, 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 the point is... Um, you know, he can't sort out his life by violence. And what is causing it? I mean, what is his problem? His problem is that he likes to be the control. He likes to be in control all the time. He likes to be the dominant one. Are you going to divorce him? Yeah, I am. I've decided. I've made my mind. Up. I think in the best interest of my kids. But it's in the best interest of you, love, as well. Yeah, but I mean, I've, I've known the man since I was like 16. And I'm now... 20. And was he never violent before? He's only started to become violent in the last year, well, last two years, really. Um, and have been, you talked to him about it? Yeah, we've been to the doctors, he's asked for help, he's been to anger management courses, um, he's been been there, done that, well, the T-shirt sort of thing, but a couple of weeks ago he just came in, uh, been out shopping, came in, um, because I wasn't doing what he wanted me to do, because I was doing decorating instead of making his tea. He just tasted me and kicked me around the house and smashed the house up and that was my lesson. But he left the house and that was his big mistake. As soon as he walked out that door, it was bolted and I was shut. I shut him out and got the police. I was this time I, I feared for my life and I feared for my children's life. Um, and it's a hard thing to do because there's so many women out there who are being beaten, are being treated in this manner, are being abused. And they're too frightened to do anything because they're frightened of the consequences afterwards. They're frightened of being on their own. And there's no need for that because you've got in the strength within yourself to overcome that. Because it is difficult, but you can get there. But I suppose these inner strengths get worn away by violent men on a repeated oh. basis. You see, I, you see, if anybody ever hit me, that's them finished. Mm. I thought I was. I think the only reason that I'm sort of coming out of myself is that I got some support. I didn't go to Women's Refuge. I just got support off my doctor's counsellor, um, and she's helped me through a lot of this. Although I'm not all the way there, uh, I'm not through all this, because, I mean, I'm covered in bruises. I've got a broken arm, I've got a fractured ankle, I've got three cracked ribs, I've got something wrong with my neck, something wrong with my shoulder, I've got two great big black eyes, I look a damn mess. And every time I look in the mirror, I just think of him and how much I want to kill him. Yeah. Um, because I look a mess, and... I only started listening to your show last week. You're joking, love? No, I not uh, Everybody listens to me. <laughs> this is this is the way the whole of the North spends its going time. To bed. I started going to bed listening to you now. Everybody listens to me, love. You've got to. This is where it all happens. I know. I'm, I'm realising that. I'm, I'm listening tonight to that fella before. The tellies yeah. go off at 10 o'clock, love. <laughs> Mine did. Scotty McClue's megaphone ends on. I know, but that man before, he hit his girlfriend or his wife because she yeah. threw a dish at him. Fair enough, she shouldn't have th thrown the dish at him. You know, she did wrong there, but no man should ever hit a woman. No man should Well, nobody man. should hit anybody else. No, because women do beat men up. You know, it isn't uh, the, you know, the man beating the woman. Well, I know one or two very, very tough ladies mm. that you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't lay a finger on anyway. Yeah, but you're saying, why did he do, you know, what, what, what is the reason for people hitting people? I believe the reason is, is that it's not because they want to be dominant and it's not because they want to be strong. It's because they know you for a long time. They find your weaknesses. They find your vulnerable spots. They know you inside and out. They know what makes you tick. And they know if they can get that power, you will do as you're told. And as soon as you don't, the anger builds up. Well, why is she not doing this now? She said she was going to do this. She said she was going to do that. Frustration and anger builds and they lash out. You know, the first time he ever did it to me, I was shocked. He promised he'd never do it again. But 
Well, I mean, I, I don't wish to, to, to uh, you know, put you through, uh, you know, any distress or anything like that, but what, what happened the first time? The first time was um, I'd given birth uh, to our first child, my little girl. Um, I think she was about three weeks old. And I'd been quite tired because I'm anemic. And uh, I'd been spending a lot of time just falling asleep on the couch when my little girl was asleep. And one night he came home from work and um, his tea wasn't ready. This is how it started. And he said, Angie, said, where's my tea? And um, I said, I'm sorry, I, said, I fell asleep. Well, that isn't good enough. I said, I'll go and make something now. No, I'll go and get it. He went out, left the house, went to the chip shop, got himself some chips and, and fish, came back. And that was it. He just, woof, just flew. I'm, he's punching my face, sent me across the room. And just, can, can you just hold on one second, love? Don't go away, right? I'm just going to take the commercial break. Right. Just stay there, yeah? Okay, yeah, no problem. Here we go. Have you found yet? Thank you, dude. I'm still here, still there, love, yes, absolutely. Um, as I say, I hope this doesn't distress you or anything like that, but it's just there are so many uh, young ladies out there listening that I think it helps a lot if you mm. can tell them a bit about your story. Mm. So, he went to the chip shop and then he came back. Yeah, he came back and um, he just, because I was still sat there, I hadn't done a thing because uh, he said I was going out for his tea and I stood up to go and make him a brew and bam, straight in the first fist and sent me flying across the room and I went through the patio doors and straight into the garden and then he actually picked me up by my hair and then all of a sudden started apologising, saying he didn't mean to do it and I was just, well, I mean I've known him since I was 17, I, mm. I, didn't, I didn't expect this, you know, it was like only a couple of years ago and it was just... It was shocking, you know, to think that. you knew somebody for that yeah. amount of years, being age 29 that I am now, you know. We know someone for nearly 14 years, and all of a sudden they do that to you. So you felt really let down. Oh, well, I Well, I wonder, but I mean, you'd, you'd known him for 14 years, and he'd never lifted a finger to you. Never. We'd argue, like, every couple does. Mm. But he'd never once lifted a finger. He was always going on about men who hit women are bastards and this, that, and the other. But he never wouldn't lift a finger to me, you know, and until it started... Really, it worsened in the last few months, uh, where it was every week. And Can you think of any other reason? I mean, I know there's no excuse, but there might be an explanation. Mm. Can you think, you know, there's a difference, obviously, between an excuse and an explanation, but can you think of, can you think of any reason that, that might have turned in that way? I think jealousy. Jealousy of me, because he's a lot older than me, and even though we've got two children, we've got um, a daughter who's two and a little boy who's seven months old, um... He was jealous of the fact that I used to go out there and help people and do things for people. Yeah, but that's just, uh, you know, I mean... I was socialised and he didn't like it. He didn't know where I was. But at the end of the day, he could be such a loving, kind person one minute and the next minute he'd be such a violent, evil, nasty man. And I, I sort of got into the routine with the children of you had to walk around on tiptoes um, not to upset him, not to bother him, and as long well, as that's, you, that's no good, that's no life, is it? No, it isn't. But a friend of mine, um, she realised what I was going through. She's been, tried to persuade me for years to leave him. She's always been saying you should leave him. And, and was he like charming to everybody outside? Oh, Mister Mister Prince Charming, the smiler. Mm. He was like God's gift to women at one point. You know, I mean, everybody loved him. Everybody liked him. He let made people laugh. You know, he'd get involved in anything. He loved kids, other people. People always happy to be around him. And even now, even though what he's done to me, even though how he's hurt me, because I've known him for that amount of time, I can understand why women in the past have said, well, it's been difficult to leave. It's hard to leave because mm. you don't just switch your feelings off. No. You know, they are still there. Your feelings are there. And when you've known somebody like 14 years like I have, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to switch this tap off now and my love's going to stop. But you've sat and that. you've talked to him and you've gone through it and to no avail. To no avail. And it is frustrating because I am now alone with two small children mm. who my daughter's obviously missing her daddy a lot and he's out there getting drunk, coming around here at two, three o'clock in the morning, banging on the door, wanting to see me, saying he loves me, he won't do it again. And there's always that thought at your back of your mind, is he going to do it again? But now I know he will. If I let him oh, in the yeah, house again, yeah. I mean, you know. you're just, it's, it's like an alcoholic love, you just cannot trust them. No, you can't. I mean, no. you know, for somebody who's violent, um, to say they won't do it again. Mm, I know, I mean, I believe that all violent men are cowards, because if violent men can only hit a woman, they're cowards. They're just pure cowards to, to hit a defenseless woman. You know, it's, 
Well, the anybody that hits anyone oh, yeah. else is anybody a Anybody that hits anybody, but he knows that I'm a lot smaller than him. I'm weaker than him. And whenever he's hit me that two weeks ago, I actually didn't fight back. I did not have the strength anymore to fight back, and I just let him kick me and kick me and kick me. And I thought, when you've had enough, you'll stop. And he did, and then he made the biggest mistake of walking out that front door. I bolted it, chained it, sat behind him down the police, and he was banging on the door. I got the police out, and they arrested him. And then he went to court and got a £60 pound fine, 12 months. Um, is he is he drinking a lot? No, he doesn't drink. He does not touch... Not really. Well, I thought you said he gets drunk and comes home. Oh, he, he's, since he's left me, he's been going out to the pub. But right. when he was with me, I mean, he never touched a drop. He was always the teetotal man. The no smoking man. The fin financial problems? Or? No, we've yeah. never had financial problems. We've both got excellent jobs. So there's really no there's really no rhyme or reason to it? No, we've both got a beautiful house, two cars, a car each, good jobs each, plenty of money, go on holidays twice a year. Um, there's no reason for him to have any violence. I thought the marriage was brilliant. Mm. Um, we were really happy, but I don't know, it just snapped, it changed. Mm. You know, and like that lady story before, about 30 years ago, and her husband did that to him, pull half of her hair out of her head. I am looking similar to that now, from what he's done to me. So 30 years on, it's still happening. And the police just say, oh, we don't want to get involved in domestic. Oh, no, I don't understand that. No, I can't either. When Sorry. they came around here that day, they wanted my side, his side. Well, I had to plead with them to make them take him away. Angela, I'm going to have to go for the news, love. Yep. Hey, we'll go on then. <laughs> dinky do. I'm going dinky do. Dinky do, darling. Take care. I'll speak to you soon. Bless you.